Let's go to line one. Say good morning to the president of the Federation of School Councils, Peter Whittle. Peter, you're on the air. Good morning, Patty. How are you? I'm doing okay. You know, uh, we'd like to see a little more sunshine. I know when I got up this morning at, at uh, quarter to six, we had blue sky and the foggy end of the uh, east end of St. John's. I thought we might get a little bit more today, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. No such luck. Not yet, anyway. I can't complain. I was down at Bjorn Peninsula for the weekend. We had uh, four days of beautiful sunshine. So, uh, yeah, that might be my quota for me. <laughs> well, stop complaining then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Can't really complain about that. Patty, I'm calling this morning. I want to talk about an issue that uh, we spoke about, um, I guess, the week before the budget came down, and that's the issue of uh, cuts to uh, teacher allocations in the province. Um, the issue is not new. Uh, for the federation, we uh, we got involved in um, quite a quite a quite a at times nasty dust up with the province and the uh, in particular the minister of education two years ago when they cut 170 units and uh, said there would be no impact on the classroom. They were wrong then, and and they're wrong now. Uh, the the, um, the the close to 70 positions they've caught this year are going to have a, a major impact in classrooms, and school councils are starting to learn. Uh, throughout the province over the last week or so, just what the impact is going to be on their schools and how many teachers they're going to lose. And I mean, we call them teaching positions, but let's just call it what it is, jobs that are going to be lost. Yep. And, uh, you know, right off the bat, I, you know, I, sometimes we call and we praise government. Sometimes we support government on issues. And on this one, we have to stand uh, uh, against this decision. Uh, we had our annual meeting, uh, general meeting, a couple weeks ago. Uh, we passed a motion that we would uh, we would ask government to reconsider this decision and my job is not to sell the government's budget it's to reflect what councils are saying and they're saying we can't absorb this latest cut of 70 positions and we're getting stories patty from principals who are going in to meet with school councils they're telling about a position or two or two and a half they're being removed from the schools and uh, the teachers say you know uh, the principal is saying look we're administrators we we can't go on the record and say this but i don't know what we're going to do how we're going to absorb it the desperation and 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 where do we go from here and uh, you know i i know and i think uh, I don't know if it was you and I that had the conversation, or maybe it was Pete when we were talking about the lead up to it. You know, well, you know, you might be saying the week after that, well, sh- geez, it could have been that much worse. And I've heard that from other people as well. But at the end of the day, uh, it's about choices. And the government chose to road education by cutting jobs and raising class caps. Not one of these 300 positions that they've cut over the last couple of years is unneeded or unnecessary. Yeah, well, there's, there's no such thing because we already have a class size problem. And then, I, I hesitate to say problem, but it's compounded it's issue. Oh, of course it is. When we have the inclusive education model, some of these teachers will be lost and class size increase where we already have students that need extra support. And so that will further complicate how the job is done. It will further complicate the getting the resources of the students that need extra help. And then, of course, consequently, that affects how the other students... Uh, school day goes. So there's a lot to it. Peter, let me ask you a question because, you know, we refer to it as teaching units and like, you know, apparently I'm a customer of healthcare too, which is all <laughs> silly references. So 77.5 units, we do know that some teachers are on staff with half a unit. Yep. And, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's 77.5 people because that's humanly impossible. So is that number 77 teachers or is it more teachers? Well, look, you know, to be frank, uh, Patty, it's more teachers than 70, and I'm not using the number 70. I'm going to use 300, okay, because it's it's been 300 jobs hauled out of the system, uh, 300 units hauled out of the system in the last three years uh, for uh, in the classrooms. And you're right, in quarter positions, half positions, the impacts on young teachers' careers and stuff, that that's a whole different issue from an employment point of view. But, yeah, uh, there's – there's I, I don't believe for a second it's, – it's like the uh, government's position on, on – and, uh, cuts to the public service. Uh, they they have a number, and then uh, as, as as the cuts start happening, start realizing that the number is not accurate. It's much higher. I don't know at this point in time. What we are asking for um, is a list of how many people are impacted by this and where they're impacted, what schools are hit. So one of the things I wanted to do this morning, after talking to a number of school councils, uh, we've had a lot of calls and some really uh, tough email over the past couple of weeks. Uh, you know, the feeling out there is we can't absorb these cuts. If anything, we need more. As you said, the ratio model does not reflect the needs in the system. Now, that argument has been I might as well knock my head against the wall and knock my head silly than try and sell that to government because they just tell me, hey, that's not the case. We we 
can uh, we can find this, we can do this, and it doesn't impact classrooms. It's wrong. And uh, school councils are being shocked by the hits. Uh, they're calling us in droves. They don't know where to turn. And what we've been telling school councils is we will aggressively fight this. We will make the issue. But you know what? It can't just be Peter Whittle on the open line or in the news. School council leaders and community leaders have to be involved. And, you know, all of us are fathers, mothers, aunts, uncles, grandparents, and relatives of children. We all know how important education is. And I can't think of a stronger kind of a core issue to the community next to health care uh, than, than what we're doing with our kids. And we can't erode the gains that we've made. So we're saying to people, if you're getting a couple positions cut in your school and you don't agree with it and it doesn't add up to you, call and write your MHA. Call and write the minister. Call and write the, uh, the school board. Call the premier's office and send a letter. Refuse to accept the spin that it could have been worse. Government can make choices, and they find savings, I believe, they could find savings in purchased and professional services in the Department of Education alone, in short-term political contracts. Pressure is what's needed. Millions are wasted on an industry that produces paper, that gathers dust, that protects friends, that gives jobs. What I want to see is our system protected as it is. And, uh, you know, uh, as you know, we had, you and I, we've had a half dozen conversations about full-day kindergarten, something that I know we need and I support and I believe it. But at this point in time, it doesn't look like they'll be ready for next fall. We did a – we have a listserv where we we poll every single school council in the province and ask them a simple question. You know, do, do, do you feel that full-day kindergarten should be deferred in light of these cuts to keep the system whole? Seventy percent of our responses say defer till until we can afford it. Stop robbing Peter to pay Paul. Let's think, let's think local Like and be vocal because if we're not vocal, we're not taken seriously. And if we just lay down and take it, they'll come back and say, well, we can take another 60 positions. We can't take it anymore. The no. system is in crisis. Yeah, I mean, the size of the classroom, people just use it as a number and a ratio, and they understand it or they don't. We have a distinct problem with class sizes, and it's not the same everywhere. And that, you know, so if your child is in a class where the the cap is controlled and you think it's manageable, that doesn't mean that it's happening everywhere. So these are big, broad, provincial-wide issues. I'm glad you brought it up again this morning, Peter. I'm completely opposed to the teacher cuts. I know we've got to curb spending. I know we've got to control and prioritize where the money goes. But any cuts inside of education are really a backward step. I well, truly Pat, believe it. And I agree with you. And it's, no, it's, it, you know, it's like I believe that we, we have to be responsible with the pub, public taxpayers' dollars. And I see the situation government is in. And we can argue all day why they're there, why they're not, if it's planning, oil prices, or whatever. But at the end of the day, governments, administrations have to make choices based on what's in front of them. And, and, and uh, they made a choice here. And the choice was uh, to come back and cut classrooms again, cut uh, units in classrooms like they like they did a couple of years ago. We've had 300 or so removed now, and it is impacting. And you're right; they put a little bit of money in for inclusion this year. It's great that they did that. They you know they added some resources, but we don't have the resources we need. We don't have the bodies we need, and inclusion is a big issue. It's a fantastic concept. It's something you can't help but support. But at the same time, if the resources aren't there, you're stressing out uh, the teachers in the classroom. Teachers, you're causing issues for other children in classrooms, you either put the resources in and do it right, or you have to reconsider what you're doing. And these are choices that government is making that are not necessarily in the best interest of our students. And again, the only way it's going to change is get on the phone, get on your email, write a letter, put it in snail mail, but make sure you're on the record as being opposed to what they're doing. This is not the right direction. I appreciate your comments this morning and your time, Peter. Thanks, Pat. I really appreciate the opportunity to get it out there. All the best. Bye-bye. Peter Whittle is the president of the Federation of School Councils.